Welcome back everyone. Today we are looking at something a lot of people ask about and that is an electric fat bike. They are hard to come by, they are hard to find, except for the cheap ones. There's a lot of really cheap brands out there making the electric fat bikes and I'm not exactly sure why, but we're checking out the Moustache or Mustache Salmon, I don't even know what they're called. They've got a silly name, EFAT26, I think is what it's called. Let's get right to it. So Moustache is an electric bike company, which is together partnered with Bosch. It's not like an official partnership, but they have been with Bosch Motors and electric kits since day one, essentially, of their creation. Their best-selling bike is the Lundy, and if you're interested in that, I can do a video on it. But today we're looking at the EFAT26, and it is a terrible name, but it works and it explains exactly what it is. Key feature on this one is it is a 26 inch wheel. So not that it's outdated or anything. Many fat bike companies are moving towards the 27 and a half, but this one still is a 26 inch wheel with a 4.5 inch wide. So it's, it's a big tire, it's easy to handle. It's gonna be really easy to handle and maybe they've done that to create a bit of easier handling. It's gonna make the overall length of the bike a little bit shorter, so you're gonna get that much more control out of it. When you're getting a little more heavy, maybe going with the bigger wheels, especially with an electric motor, just becomes more cumbersome. You're already adding weight to it with a bike which is supposed to be really agile, and now it's gonna be a little bit better by going to a 26. That's my theory on it anyway, and I think it makes a little bit of sense. This comes with really good brakes to it, so some Agura setup has four piston on the front, two on the back, so that's where you want it. You want the most braking power in the front end, and you're gonna get that, and you get the perfect levers for it. Like, Magura makes a very specific and well thought out product. They make very high end brake products. These ones, you know, they're the entry level set, but it's still way higher end than some Shimano MT400 setup. They're gonna have a lot of stopping power, especially getting the four piston front, but keeping that price down a little bit in the other range. Shifting wise, they've gone to the respectable Dior 11 speed. So Shimano Dior has long been a very high end product set and now is getting trickled down more and more. There is the 10 speed option, 11, 12, then it goes into the XT, XTR. The 11 speed works really well, has a huge range to it, pretty much the exact same as a 12 speed, but they just cut out a couple little increments in it although you don't miss really any of them. It's a really good compromise between the 10 speeds and the 12 speed options. 11 gives you kind of the best of both worlds with no real downside, especially when you put an electric motor to it. Frame-wise design, it looks great. It's clean, some sharp angle edges to it, low step over, does have kind of a high minimum seat height for the large, but it's still a large bike. It's not like it fits crazy big or crazy small. It fits pretty much exactly as you'd expect a large bike to fit which is kind of nice, it's consistent that way. It does come with a drop post, it's an Axi, AXA, not 100% sure. It works well, has good power to it. It does have a bit of release to it, so you're able to overpower the piston and pull it back up. There is really no downside to that. It's just different than other ones I've seen in the past. Obviously, all the cables are integrated, so it looks clean, it's gonna work well, and it's just honestly gonna be a nice bike to ride. Geometry wise, it's pretty trail friendly. It's definitely not endurance or like load up with a thousand bags and you know, adventure. It is loaded and designed to be a trail bike. It does come with a front fork and that is the Blue Toe from RockShox. That could be a reason why they stuck to the 26s as well because it's the only fork out there which is available. It's the only way you can make a fat bike with a fork right now. They're very hard to come by, especially in those 27.5s. All the major companies probably eat them up, whereas a RockShox Blue Toe gets you really good power, really good performance out of it. But the only limitation is you're in 26 inch wheels, which again, not that big of a deal. Battery is fully encased into the frame. It is the Bosch Power Tube. 500 watt hour, so it will work really, really well. It's honestly a really clean looking bike. Back to the design, it looks really good, and that power tube is so sleek in there. Having sharpened edges instead of a round tube really makes it look low profile and fits that power tube in there so well. Overall, it looks great, and it's gonna perform great with the power spec. The tires on it are really nice, so this could be a winter commuter, obviously, in the really cold temperatures, minus 20 below, 
Celsius that is, you are going to see some performance lag in the battery, but otherwise it's gonna perform excellently. I did play with it in the snow and it's actually a pretty usable machine and there is nothing wrong with it. Chews through it, we went through a big pile of snow like two feet high, really just chewed right through it, no issues. They do come with some lights, which is interesting. These are not connected to the bike in any which way, they're just stretch band on, battery powered, not rechargeable, just standard old batteries. LED, better than nothing, it is nice they include them. Obviously winter time means there's probably more chance you're out at night and it's gonna be dark, but overall, it's nice they throw them in. They're not the fanciest ones around. Definitely worth upgrading if you're gonna be doing more nighttime commuting or just riding a lot more. So a bike like this, who is it for? Who wants something like this? Honestly, a lot of people ask about electric fat bikes. Fat bikes look cool. Like they have big, huge tires. They're kind of over the top. But a lot of people like that idea and are interested in having something unique, different, not just the standard bike. You get a lot of comfort through those tires being such a high volume with low pressure in them. You're gonna be able to roll over things smoother, whether it's gravel, pavement, just a curb. It's just gonna be a nice, easy ride experience. Add on some higher performance stuff and you still have a very capable mountain bike. So what are the downsides? Not really too much. The fat tires obviously resist on the ground a little bit more and don't roll as freely. But when you add in a Bosch electric motor now, which has a lot of performance to it, you're gonna cruise along no issues and just be able to outperform anything. You're gonna be climb well, you're gonna be able to ride well, you're gonna be able to keep a higher average pace. Obviously you'll use a bit more electricity, but I don't know if it's really gonna make a big difference for the people who are looking. With a price tag of about 8,000 Canadian dollars, you know, that's probably 7,000 US. It's um, not the cheapest electric bike around. You are paying for some good performance. You are paying for some uniquities to it. You do have high quality builds. You do have high quality parts. But unless you're really looking for a fat bike to explore winter time or soft sand areas where you might need a bit more traction or flotation, which I do question whether you would get more flotation being that you add 20 pounds of electric stuff on it, but theoretically they should. So if you need all those, it's gonna be great. If you don't and you're just doing it for style or look, you are just paying a premium for essentially nothing. It's still worth it, it still looks cool, it still will be able to go. So it's gonna be able to go anywhere you want and you'll be able to take advantage of owning it and using it anywhere but if you don't really have any plans, you might not use it and then it might not be worth it. It's hard to say. I think it's cool. It honestly is a fantastic looking bike and I think a lot of people will be interested in it. All the features you need, it has an electric motor, it is a fat bike and uh, the electric revolution is just continuing whether you like it or not. So that's about all I can say. All right, good luck.